This is the story of me trying to see if I can figure out how to turn a 20-foot shipping container into a suitable storage place for a nice car. So what am I doing here? Why do I have a wrench with a piece of tape on the side of the inside of a container? Well, what I'm trying to do here is cut out two huge swing-in doors that swing open this way, and they're gonna need hinges. And I reasoned that if I cut the part where the hinges go first and then actually bolt the hinges up, then I can just cut the rest of it with my sawzall and it'll just go and be hanging there perfectly aligned and ready to go. But there's only one of me and I need to be outside hitting the bolt with a gun and on the inside holding this nut still so that it can tighten. And what I've done is figured out that if I just put this guy on here, it's a flare nut wrench so it's not gonna slip, and put the tape on here, believe it or not, it holds perfectly well and these are like these plastic rimmed, um, you know, non-slip nuts. So once they get down there and they start grabbing, they're not gonna move. And I can literally go out there and just go boom, 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 and tighten that thing up, no problem. I'll show you. Here we are, container, gun on the ground. And... had a little bit of a revelation moment after doing this guy here where it's basically just a slit with this thing mounted here and I realized it's actually folded outwards like this you know what I mean like I didn't realize that this thing was round in the middle I thought it was flat so <clears throat> what am I doing now I cut a extra little slot there you see what I mean that lets the hinge fit in there and nestle in there and then it's it's mounted perfectly flat so I've got one of those down here. They're not fun to cut. They're not precision by any means either. They're just, you know, because there's, it sticks up just a little bit, I see. Just a little. So, thunk. It goes right there and I'm gonna have to check this one to make sure I got it right. Okay, so I'm almost ready to start cutting out the doors. The hinges, I have one more hinge I actually need to s slot in there and then I'll do it. But this is my evil plan. Basically, it needs to be cut across the bottom, needs to be cut up the middle, across the top, and then down each, basically you join the hinges. They already have slices in them. And suddenly I will have doors that are swinging. And the thing that occurs to me is that this thing is a major support for the actual container itself. When I start chopping here, it's gonna start wanting to crunch downwards, and not just that, but move inwards like this. Like it's gonna wanna tilt towards the middle. So how do you cut to make sure that you don't pinch your blade and you're fucked? Well, you start from here and here, which is the, the place that's gonna wanna pinch the most. Sag in the middle, go this way and this way, but a little bit at a time, and then a little more this way, and a little more this way, a little more, until you get over here, you're pretty safe. Because this is the sag point, okay? Okay, perfect example of what's going on here. This, by the way, this thing's dented all over the place. That means it is compromised structurally. And the whole wall, actually, you can't really see it, but it goes in like this because it's dented from the outside. I cut this one line all the way across and you can see that it's basically just, it's all over the place. And so I decided to go ahead and start cutting the vertical. And sure enough, wide, 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 it pinches right there. And then it gets wide again because this stuff isn't perfectly even. You know what I mean? So it's binding right here, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna cut the rest of the way down and then finish this guy over here because I actually think this is gonna be my pinch point, the middle part. Ran into another situation that I thought I had to, I think I need to take care of now. This stuff's really flexible, right? Like really flexible. If I am to cut these things right now and then flip them open, they're literally just gonna wave around like a potato chip. And I didn't really think about that at first. So I've got these pieces of metal that actually came from a ping pong table, which I disassembled. And I'm going to brace them across here with just some sheet metal screws, just to help keep the door stiff. And at some point I may replace that with wood or something a little more easy to deal with. And that's gonna help the doors keep their form. In fact, probably not the worst thing that I could ever do would be to take like a decently stiff piece of wood and put it along here too, like right next to the hinge. But yeah, anyway, you understand the point. 
How do you say success in Klingon? I can't remember. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I, have, I have two flappy doors now that both kind of want to bind with the building. To figure out how to push them through and get them on the other side, then I'm gonna put stoppers along here so they can't come in. But yeah, I've got doors at least. Oh, fuck, come on up. It needs to be lifted up from the bottom. Come on, it's binding across here somewhere. Anyway, I've got two doors. Okay, so I'm in the process of trying to put these little stoppers here so the door can only go in so far before it stops. And this is my first time taking both doors and overlapping them on each other. And notice that they literally do overlap, like by a half an inch at least. And I guess that makes sense because you got this metal that's corrugated like this. And when you cut it loose and you actually even put a stick on it to straighten it, it goes and it starts to straighten out. So it's literally longer than it was before. See that? I don't even need to put a weather seal there. I can just put a piece of weather stripping along here and it'll be fine. Pretty, pretty funny. Okay, so we're in the situation where we've got this big truck that sprays spray foam all the way over to here. And these guys are very nicely prepping the area so they can put spray foam in. They think they're going to be here for about a half a day. Okay, so I always wondered how these guys figure out whether they sprayed it on correctly. <laughs> this is a three inch, right? So we're gonna go to the ceiling and then we go like this. <laughs> and I think I could, yeah, I'm touching. It's three inch, pretty accurate. Thank you. And this one is two inches. And basically it's hard to explain, but on the part that sticks out, it is two inch. Boom. But on the part that goes into the corrugation, if I could push it, in some cases it's actually more. They almost made it, they almost made it flat instead of corrugated, which is very nice. So, thanks for your help, man. Mm. Looks good. So I've actually dealt with uh, having foam installed before, and what these guys use in order to get rid of overspray powder is a curry comb, a horse dressage curry comb, basically. This is kind of crazy. I expected this foam to make these doors feel more heavy than they do. They still feel pretty light. It's awesome. Okay, so at this point, I think this thing is done. It's got foam. Doors are both flapped open right now. I guess I'm gonna kind of let it cure a little bit. It doesn't even really particularly smell in here, which is great. So it's it's three inches on the top, about two inches on the side, as we proved with the pokey stick. It's solid as a rock. You know, when I came in here, the guys were like all boom, boom, boom to show me how solid it is, and it is indeed solid. It still echoes. Hey, hey. It actually rings a little bit in here. 
Um, I guess this stuff is smooth and hard enough to actually echo stuff back. I've got my upper vent up here, my lower vent down there, my questionable <laughs> the moisture barrier here, which, you know, it's just supposed to stop driving rain, not prevent it from actually coming in a little bit. And, you know, whatever. Um, the main thing is just to keep the car in a place where it's not going to get too terribly hot or too terribly cold. And, um, you know, keep it nice until I can clear out my garage. Okay, I'm getting ready to pull the car into the foamed container. As you can see, there's plenty of glare on the, on the windshield. I can't really see much better than you can here with the camera. First thing I have to do is close these guys up. So now I don't even have my rear view mirrors for reference. I'm depending entirely on those blue hand balls hanging down there. I'm going up a wooden ramp right now. I basically have to try to hug this side until I hit a blue ball and then sort of straighten out. I can see where I'm going now. And you just drive in and you trust your blue balls. You better be hitting them on both sides. There we go. Looks a little close on that side. And you actually don't want to be steering too much, honestly, if you can avoid it. You want to basically be coming in here just as straight as possible. I'm hitting this guy. You can see him just barely moving. Barely moving that guy over there. And by about the time I get to that string being right outside this window here, and I can clear this guy back there, <laughs> I'm good to open the door. So I'm gonna put it in park and open the door. And sure enough, I'm good. There's the ball. And I just turn off the car from here. And I can close up the doors and I'm good. And then backing out is even more. You really just have to keep the wheel straight because you can. You really can't tell what's going on. Um, so it's it's a bit harrowing. Nicer to do if you have a friend to help you.